All right, so as noted, uh, Friday after the show went off the air, Zelina Vega was released from WWE. In the wake of this release, SAG-AFTRA president Gabriel Carteris gave a statement Monday following how her organization is viewing those within pro wrestling. Given to Spectrum Sports 360 John Alba, she said, wrestling is as much about media as it is sports, and we are going to directly engage with members of this profession to help find ways for them to protect themselves as more people reinvest in unions and as more working people are harassed by employers who don't want to protect them. sag is committed to doing what we can to help professional wrestlers secure the protections that they deserve. They have 160,000 actors, announcers, broadcast journalists. What about me? Dancers, DJs, news writers, news editors, program hosts, puppeteers. So I guess uh, the folks at the also Firefly you. Funhouse could be uh, involved in sag -Aftra. Recording artists, singers, stunt performers, voiceover artists, media professionals. Dude, why aren't I in SAG right now? She specifically didn't mention WWE by name. So if the organization follows through with their efforts, every major organization could be affected, but how and to what effect remains to be seen. So honestly, what we need is we need somebody involved in SAG-AFTRA to basically come on the show and, and talk to us about it, because I don't know enough about it. Obviously, there's been a lot of discussion about WWE, unions, SAG, and what all of this entails. And I don't know enough to talk about it in detail, but I do know that a union is not just some magical thing. Obviously, the union offers some protections, but at the same time, if you're part of a union and, for example, the union decides to go on strike, let's say you're a school teacher and the union decides to strike, you're done working till the strike is over. Like, you do not have the option of saying, well, you know, the union wants to go on strike, but I really want to teach tomorrow because these kids need... No, you're out. So you got to consider that in professional wrestling as well, especially depending on some of the things that, that these wrestlers are, are upset about nowadays. I mean, would a union necessarily allow you to go do some of these things that these wrestlers want to do as independent contractors? I don't know. So I think that there, there's two sides to this story, obviously. It's very clear that wrestlers need some form of protection. But I think the wrestlers also need to know that, yes, you would be getting certain forms of protection. You would be getting uh, certain things in regards to insurance, and etc. But you're also part of a union where if the union decides to do something that you don't want to do, too bad. You're doing it. So this will be very interesting to follow. I'm not saying that like at any moment, all of a sudden, uh, WWE wrestlers are going to be unionized through SAG or whatever. But I mean, things could be coming and it'll be interesting to see what positives would come out of this and what negatives. Mike, your thoughts? Yeah, there's a lot of push and pull. You know, I've been a part of a union before when you're not making a lot of money. You know, union dues come up, things like that, where it's like, ah, you know, but there are. Continue on. Are, we got this. Yeah, absolutely. There are situations where, you know, unions become very valuable. And this has been a case with this whole Twitch thing that. Uh, where a little bit of collective bargaining and some support on your behalf would be good. Now, I, I I wonder if you're WWE, AEW, ROH, right? I, I'm almost wondering, and they're not going to do this, but if the union talk starts to get a little bit more thick, I wonder if you try to be open to what essentially would be a NFLPA uh, type of deal where – it is a union. There is representation for you. It is a union, but it is in the auspices of WWE because one thing is going to be who's going to be the shop steward in this? Who's going to field all of these complaints from all of these people up and down the card? You know, there's going to have to be a whole structure that gets set up, and there's going to have to be people who really know that business, know the locker room, know what's going on now, as well as what's happened in the past. And you're really going to have to bring in some people where. Yeah, I wonder if individually, like maybe, I, again, I don't know what you can do across the board for any wrestler that starts, gets out of training school and, and wants to join the union, you know, and wants to try to get vested. I'm not sure how you're going to be able to do that with them, but with like WWE, AAW, and ROH, 
it almost seems like that may ultimately be kind of the best way to go where you can't have a bubble for everybody in the business. What you have is just for specifically your sport, you know, or in this case, your promotion, you have people there that can actually help you out that way. It's, it's having a SAG or an after come in is very, it, it would be interesting. I know a lot of people go, Hey, they should join them. They should join. What's the big one in Las Vegas. It's the culinary arts uh, union. I believe it is where, uh, they have a lot of power, but it, it may be a situation where they ought to look more to sports and specifically that way and see on how to do things. Because, again, you, this is going to be a process. There's going to be a lot of people that want to see this happen overnight. You don't snap your fingers and make things happen. There's a lot of things that need to go into effect, and it's going to change the business uh, dramatically in how you look at it. This person here says, I would like to see Zelina Vega as a babyface, whether she goes to AW or not, not just due to current circumstances of her standing up for unionization, but because of her real-life backstory. Father passed away in 9-11. Yes, I have no, I've no—I've mentioned this before. I have absolutely no idea why. Like, virtually everywhere that Zelina Vega has ever gone, like, she's always portrayed as a heel. It's baffling to me. They even did an impact. It was the weirdest thing. They actually had, like, a 9-11 show. And she was part of, like, the opening deal because her father had passed away in 9-11. And she was totally, total baby face during this deal. And literally, the deal ends, and the pay-per-view continues, and then later she comes out, and she's a heel! It was bizarre. But that's, that's for down the road, because we don't know what's going to happen with Zelina. Very quickly, the story, if you don't know. So the timeline, and I, I figured this on Friday, and this is actually what ended up happening. She tweeted something about, I support unionization. Then, like, 20 minutes later, WWE announces she's gone. And so, at first, everybody thought, well, you know, she tweeted something positive about unions, and so they fired her. That's actually not what happened. What happened was, it was all blowback over the Twitch and OnlyFans and, and deal. Because a lot of these, as I've said before, I don't know what anyone's making in WWE, all right? But, and this has not changed... I mean, the Randy Ortons, they're making so much more than a Zelina Vega, it's not even funny. I don't know what Zelina Vega was making. I know that the women are making more now. I know that four or five years ago, if some of you knew what the women were making, you'd be aghast, okay? But, like, for some of the women, this Twitch stuff, this this her OnlyFans, I mean, they're going to make more money doing that than they are on their WWE downside guarantee with no touring and nothing. So it comes down to, well, what can I make more doing? And do I feel that if I quit WWE, I'll still make that, even though I'm not a WWE performer? She apparently decided I can, I can make way more doing that than giving it all up and just making my downside. So they had the blow up or whatever. The company releases her. She knew she was going to be released. Then she makes her tweet after that. And then, of course, everything goes as everything goes. And we see about the WWE release and everything like that. But that's... That's the way that everything worked out. And as I've noted a million times, the situation is different for everybody. If Randy Orton starts a Twitch stream, or AJ Styles. AJ Styles is the best example. AJ goes up there, he's doing his Twitch deal, he's playing some video games, and he makes X amount of dollars off that. That ain't even approaching what this guy's making as a contracted WWE main event performer. So you tell an AJ Styles, knock it off, and he's done. But you tell some of the women, a page, who's just basically getting paid to be page. She's not even on television. I mean, a page or a Zelina Vega. I mean, some of these individuals, it's better off for them to get out. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.